Hey, I'm Bob Alsop with Laguna Tools, or Laguna CNC. Some people know me as Router Bob. Uh, we're going to do a video on CNC today. I think you'll find it very interesting. We're going to do a, a guitar neck, 3D guitar neck. Uh, we started out uh, with some drawings that a customer actually bought in, uh, on the internet of a Stratocaster type guitar. Uh, I think you'll recognize that. Uh, we have done videos previously on the guitar body. We wanted to do the guitar neck. Uh, we started out with a 2D drawing, which was a basic AutoCAD drawing, quite a few features on it, and, and we dug out the geometry for, for the guitar neck and some of the placement of the holes. Now, in actuality, most of the guitar neck is simple 2D geometry, 2D machining. It's not 3D solid surface stuff, but we wanted to really carry this to the next level. Uh, the, the software we're using today is Rhino 3D. A lot of people are familiar with it. It's, it's a pretty decent 3D software. Uh, what we wanted to do was actually take that AutoCAD type drawing and turn the guitar neck into an actual 3D solid model and use that to develop the tool path. So that's what we've done here. All right, this is what the uh, solid model looks like. Uh, once again, it was strictly derived off of the, the geometry that we started with. This area up in this area here in the headstock, this is actually a 3D surface. There's some curvature here. That takes 3D machining. Uh, these are peg holes. Uh, that's simple 2D machining. Uh, we've also cut a slot for the stiffener down the center of the neck, and we've also got some holes for alignment that will actually be concealed underneath the fretboard uh, because when we flip this over and machine the back side, we're going to need to be able to locate that so that everything lines up. Now, one thing that's nice about this, I can look at this in some different ways. This is just the wireframe. You can kind of see all the way through it. One of the things I wanted to point out, and, and one of the reasons we went to, to the solid modeling aspect was we wanted to create for, for the customer or for the, for the guitarist the ability to have a neck design custom for his fit. Uh, and that area is actually this part of the neck. And if you look at this wireframe, you'll see a shape right here, and you'll see a shape right here, and there's an intermediate one in here. Well, the actual contour of this neck is determined strictly by those two shapes. So if I want to customize a neck for a certain feel, I simply just have to change those shapes. And that model or that solid that we're machining acquires that. So by doing this in solid modeling, I can make a customized neck for, for an individual guitarist to his preference. And in fact, I might have 20 different necks for a guitarist to say, which one do you like on your guitar? And solid modeling lets us do that. Otherwise, uh, we could have done this much simpler probably. Now, the other thing I can do is I can render it and render it, rendering gives it a little nicer view. But that's a solid model of the, of the guitar neck. Now let's look at where we go from here. This is how this was created. Now what we want to do is we want to, we're going to cut this in two different setups. First setup is we're going to machine the, the front of the, the guitar neck. We're going to do the 3D surfacing. We're also going to cut the outline of the, of the neck out. Uh, we're going to leave some extra room because we're going to do the final finish cut after it's flipped. We're going to drill all the holes. We're going to cut the slot. We're going to drill the holes for the pins. So let's look at, at the specifics on how that was done. And then we'll cut the, one of these out at the, at the machine. Okay, now th this uh, basically shows the table setup for the machine. Uh, what you need to think about, this is a corner of the machine table. So this is the origin of the drawing. Uh, the machine we're cutting this on is Laguna CNC Swift Series, uh, four foot by four foot, very popular. Uh, has a four foot by four table. And so I've got this set up in two stages. The first stage, uh, we're actually going to put the blank on here. Today we'll be holding the blank down with double stick tape. Uh, a lot of the videos, I like that. All right, so we'll be doing the surface machining here, roughing the outline out. Then we'll be taking that and flipping it over, uh, over to this position. Uh, we'll also we'll use locator pins to position that. Now, one of the other things that, that, that we have the ability to customize also is this area right here. We use a generic transition, but so, this is almost as important as how the guitar neck feels here. So we've also got the ability in the, in the 3D stuff to actually create almost any type of surface you can imagine. So that's one of the reasons that we actually went to solid modeling on that. 
Okay, we've got our solid model created. Now let's go to the next step and let's create tool paths so that we can actually output code to the machine. Uh, what we've selected for this is a product called Rhino Cam. Rhino Cam is a plug-in for Rhino 3D, and Rhino Cam allows us to, to do the total programming right in the right in the software. We don't have to save stuff and copy it out. And we basically open it up this way. It has what's called a browser. And this looks a little like gibberish over here, but basically these are different areas where machining's done. Now let's take a couple of those and look at them. In fact, first let's put a block on here. Now what, what this represents, this block represents a, um, a, a piece of stock. And it, once you get to the CNC part, we define a piece of stock and we, we say where is the stock located in reference to the machine origin and so forth. The reason I actually did this as one large piece even though I'm not, is because in the end I want to be able to run a program that machines both uh, the front of the neck and the back. So each cycle of programs, I get a complete neck. And so I did that by using a larger piece of stock here. It really doesn't have anything else to do with it. Now, let's look at what we did first, all right? First thing I wanted to do was to create this area. Okay, this is the area I told you that was a 3D surface. You know, it's got some contours here. And so we did this in a number of different passes. First, we wanted to rough it out. Uh, then we got a little closer, then we did the final cut so that we get a, a really, really smooth transition here. We, we don't want to have to do any secondary operations on it. So that was the first operation of, of the front of the neck was to cut that, okay? And that was done with a quarter inch ball nose tool. Okay, then we went to, to, uh, uh, to do the outline, and the first thing I wanted to do was to actually cut the outline of the, of the neck itself, but I left it about 30 thousandths fat because I, when we flip this over, I'm actually going to clean that up uh, with a finished cut. What, an, an exception to that is this area right here. Since when this is flipped over, this is going to be unsupported, I thought it probably made sense to go ahead and do that, the final pass in here. So this, this part of the headstock is done. Okay, now once I got that done, there's a couple more things we needed to do. For one thing, I needed to drill a couple holes and I also needed to, to do the location pins. So here's the hole pocketing, and you'll see those. And now those are the holes for the uh, the pegs. And those are 10 millimeter holes that, uh, that are actually getting machined with a quarter inch bit. Okay, then I had standard drilling, and that created the two pin holes. And then I went ahead and made an en uh, engraving tool path that gave me the slot. So that's the machining on the face side of the guitar neck. Okay, our next operation is going to be performed on the back side of the guitar neck. Basically what we want to do is cut this 3D surface and then we want to do the final cut along the edge so we get a really nice finish on the perimeter. Alright, the first thing, let's see, let's look at the 3D surface for the back. We're going to cut that with a, a, a ball mill. The first thing we're going to do is a horizontal operation and what this basically does is it goes over and it knocks out a lot of wood. It roughs the surface out. It's pretty fast. It'll be rough. Okay, once we get that done, we come back in. Now we do a much finer tool path. The same tool but the, the spacing between each tool path uh, is closer. But when you get into some of the 3D stuff, as you come closer to 90 degrees here, the, the tool path resolution is not quite as good. So what we really want to do is a couple more things. We want to actually in this, these transition areas, we want to actually machine those with very fine uh, spacing uh, vertically, so that you get really, really good definition on here, and we don't that you can't get with, with the other tool path. And by the same token, we're going to do the same thing on these edges here. So when we get finished with that, it's going to be pretty nice. And if we were watching this in real time, this is what you'd see. So if we, when we watch, when we cut this on the machine, you're going to see this. So that's the 3D machining on the, on the back neck. And, and then once we get that finished, then it's just a matter of running the outside. Now let's, let's put some material to that and let's look at those. Now, if you, when you watch this actually machining in the wood, you'll be able to see this. 
and it's not this fast on the machine, unfortunately. Now there's those little transition pieces being machined so that we get really, really good detail on those because <clears throat> that's a very important part of the design. And then we also want to make sure that down the sides we get, get uh, real good definition. And finally we'll finish, uh, finish our final pass and our guitar neck should be done. Now that looks pretty good. Once we've get, got those operations done, if you notice when I, when I did these operations, I named them. If you look at this one right here, it says front 3D, quarter inch ball nose, front outline, 3 8 finisher, front quarter down shear. All right, my machine doesn't have a tool changer, so I, what I want to do is output a program for each tool. And so I named those just to make it easy. For instance, on this, uh, on this front 3D quarter ball, uh, ball mill, ball nose, there's horizontal roughing, panel finishing, curve machining, all done with the same tool. So when I, when I say output code, when I say right click to post, that outputs the machine code. Now I've already output these machine codes. Now what we're going to do is go out to the shop and we're going we're gonna to run these and see how they come out. All right, we're finally out in the shop. This is Laguna Swift CNC router. This one happens to be a four foot by four foot table. Two horsepower liquid cool electro spindle. This is what we're going to cut our guitar neck on. Uh, we normally run a dust collector with it, but I'm going to take this out of the way so that you can actually see the, the, the machining. I think it'll be a lot more interesting video for you. All right, I've already done a little preliminary work on setting the machine up. This is a spool board. I've actually cut an outline so I know where the part's going to be when we machine it. And I've also uh, attached our, our blank to the tabletop. So we're really ready to, to start machining. We've got a quarter inch ball nose and if you remember in a sequence on the computer, uh, we're going to do that surface, that dished out surface in the headstock of the, of the neck to start with. And that should take a little bit of time. Take a look at that. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, yeah. See, especially up here where you have this upcut that came out really, really nice and smooth. So, well, I'm really pleased with that. Now, on this side of the guitar neck, that's really the only 3D surface. Everything else on there is simple 2D cutting. All right. Next, we're going to put a straight bit in and define the perimeter. Taking off thirty thousand. That's our finish. Pad. That's our finish page. No, it's off the edge, not off the bottom. See, that's how you. So you rough it. You leave thirty thousand. You rough it out. Then you come back over and that finish pad. And then you don't get those witness lines at the different depths. Now let's take a look at what we just did. We took a three eighths bit and we cut the details out in, in a number of passes. But I left it about thirty thousandths fat. Then if you watch, and we should be able to free this. If you watched, it came back and did a finish pass in here. It took off about 30,000, so this area is, is to finish size. Now, once we flip this over and machine the other side, we'll actually come back and trim, take that extra 30,000 off to give us a really, really nice finish. Oh. 
Okay, we've got uh, all the machining done on the front side of the guitar neck. We've got our contour cut out, we've got our holes for the pegs, we've got our slot in the center, we've got our locator pins. Now we're ready to take this off, put the pins in the holes, locate it, and, and machine the back side. All right, well we're set up now in the second position to do the back side of the guitar neck. Primarily what we'll be doing is cutting that hand surface that we looked at on the computer, and when we're done with that, we'll be going around the perimeter with that finish tool to take off that allowance we left on the other side. So. This first tool that we'll be using is a quarter inch ball mill and uh, it'll do a number of different strategies for cutting so let's get it going. There's that curve, that part fits my head. And then this transition area up here, I, I can just foresee being able to create a custom shape up here with that nerves editor. That really came out nice. Now we still, our, our handle is still large, so we're, we're gonna do our final trim on here and we'll pretty much have it done. Corbin. No. Right, most people know you're a master craftsman, trained in the old me. world, you know, but, and, and have won awards, but most woodworkers are guys like me, you know. If I had enough time, I probably couldn't be as good as you because I probably don't have the right DNA. But this machine's an equalizer because the quality of the craftsmanship is not in me, it's in what the machine did. So a machine like this lets some, an average woodworker like me be as good as you. It may be even better because I can probably do that faster than you can do it. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know what to say, Bob. <laughs> I don't know what to say. This is, of course, again, you can make exactly the same piece one more time. Right. So, yeah, I can get my spoke shapes out and I can do, uh, you know, design as I go. But man, this, is, this really blows me away. And, 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 and there's hardly any sanding left. Right, and right. this is hard maple. Right. Yeah. So I, um, I don't want to look at it as a competition between you, the next generation of craftsmen, or me as the old generation of craftsmen. I think this is just another tool. Yeah. This I is another tool. Okay. okay. It looks just like the model that the computer screen created. Yeah. That's what's yeah. something about yeah. it. But the designs we can do now, it's, um, it, it, it really is mind blowing. All right, hey, we, we hope you enjoyed the video uh, making the guitar neck. If you want any more information about the Laguna Swift CNC's, you can go to lagunatools.com or call us at 1-800-234-1976. Thank you very much for watching.